Okay, everyone, Be Agent Day here. Today we'll do the in-depth review of this Lenovo IdealPad C340. Now this model that I've got here is the 15 IWL version. It's the 15 inch two-in-one, so you can actually do the flip and you can actually become a tablet there. So you can actually pull out the pen and start writing on it and take notes on it. So this is the 15 inch version of it and it is pretty very well priced, you gotta say. Uh, but it, And I did do the unboxing of it seven months ago so i'm sorry it took me about that long to actually get this computer back so i can actually do the review for it if you're joining me for the very first time hope you actually enjoy the format that i do my reviews in and if you're a returning viewer i'm sorry it took me that long to actually get this computer back to do the review and i hope you guys are staying safe all right let's get on with the computer if you're actually looking for about this pen support of this computer here just look at my previous video I did for my unboxing. I did do the Vegeta test and also the, the quick look at the pen itself. So I'm not actually going to dwell too much in this review here. I'm going to do some other stuff for this review. So we're going to look at the temperature, the noise of the computer itself, also the speakers as well, and also the display as well for this computer as well. Let's start off with the keyboard. Now the keyboard here, what we've got here, is a quite nice keyboard here. It's got a bit of a tactile feel to it, of course. Um, it hasn't got a massive amount of key travel compared to a lot of other computers here, but it's got enough there to actually feel quite nice there. So it's definitely not like a MacBook. It's got a fair bit more than the MacBook Pro does, and it's got a quite nice little tactile feel to it, of course, there. And it's got a bit of smooth sort of feel finish to the actual surface of each keys there and it's got a bit of nice spacing there too as well too for it now just do note that the power button is on the right hand side of the computer here so it's nicely integrated into the keyboard there i know a lot of other laptops are but this one is on the right hand side so you do have to get used to it sitting on the right hand side there now as for the trackpad here now the trackpad here is actually now from my previous video the unboxing video Thought this wasn't a mechanical keyboard but it is it just was probably stuck when i actually did the unboxing for it but it does actually have a click and you can feel it depress in there and it's still very nice feel to smooth to it although i do must say that if you get a little bit of moist on your finger there it does feel a little bit not as smooth there but you should be quite happily still be able to move it your mouse cursor around with even with a moist finger there for more of a sweat as well and what i'm trying to say there Let's have a look at the ports on the computer. Starting on the right hand side of the computer, we have the power button there. Then we've got the full size SD card reader. And then we've got two USB A ports. There's USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. On the one on the right is a power share port, so you can actually charge your devices without having to have the computer turned on. On the left hand side, we have the port to plug that power adapter in there. Then we have a HDMI port. Now, this is version 1.4B. And then we have a USB-C port. Now this is USB 3.1 Gen 1 port. So be careful there. It's not the higher bandwidth port. And also it is not a Thunderbolt port. And if you plug in a power adapter for trying to charge it through, it will not accept that neither. And if you put it in a docking station with power, it also doesn't charge the laptop, unfortunately, neither. Now this also has a headphone jack, which is fantastic to see it's still got it. And there is also a webcam on top of the display here. And it, Lenovo put in a privacy shutter on there, which is great. It's just a little quick of a flick of a switch. And you actually see a covering go over the lens there. And you actually see it go red as well too, which means that it's actually physically covered there. So even if it accidentally turned on, there's actually something blocking the view there, which is good there. So you don't need electrical tape or blue tack anymore. There are two speakers located on the bottom front of the computer and when I did the measurement for the maximum volume of the speakers it managed to peak at 78.4 decibels so it's actually quite on the quiet side of other compared to a lot of other laptops there and this is probably one of the departments that Lenovo can probably improve in for the next version but as for the sound quality it didn't do too bad and when it was up the maximum volume it didn't distort too much it wasn't too crazy tinny but it could do with a little bit more bass there but it does give you a bit of a surround sort of feel to the sound there which is not too bad but definitely it's the actual loudness of the volume of the speakers that was the major problem i found for the speakers on this c340 so definitely a place that Lenovo can look at doing improvements in. So the weight of the C340 is 2.05 kilos and add on the power adapter is 
2.26 kilos. Now as for the battery life of this computer here, I did the, run my testers in the four different modes there. So first off was the performance mode. So basically, and I had the computer on stress test on 100% load there, and it only managed to hit one hour and 20 minutes. That's actually pretty decent compared to a lot of other computers that I've been actually testing there. So one hour and 20 minutes is pretty good for performance mode there. Now as for better performance mode, you're looking at two hours and 30 minutes there. And as for battery life, I did bring down the display brightness to about 50% and it managed to get four hours and 40 minutes there. And as for the battery saving mode, it managed to pull six hours. So that's pretty decent there for, uh, especially for a 15 inch computer here and for a large display here. As for build quality, I've got to say, Lenovo have done a pretty good job on this iDualPad C340. This has been out for about seven months and it's done a fair bit of traveling. And I've got to say, it looks as if it's on the day that I actually unbox this computer here. I don't see much scratches there. I don't see much dents there as well too. So it's pretty good in very good nick there, I've got to say there. The only thing I must say about the build quality is I do wish that Lenovo actually put a more stronger hinge, as you can see from this. It is quite flimsy. It is a 15 inch display there. So it's got a bit of weight there, but which I actually wish that Lenovo put a more stronger, stiffer hinge for this, because as you start touch tight, the display, you'll start to feel it just move about as you can see the hair. So it's a bit flimsy there. Um, I just wish they actually put a more stiffer hinge there for it. And of course, once you get into the two in one mode, that doesn't really become a problem. It's only when you're actually in clamshell mode and then you're actually touching the screen there, you feel you start to feel it just moving about there. That's what I only thing I can really complain about the build quality of this computer, else it is fantastic, I gotta say. As for the temperature and noise of this computer here, when I stress test this computer, I found most of the heat is mostly concentrated near the center of the keyboard there. And that's not unsurprising because that's where the processor actually is located, right underneath that section of the keyboard. Now, first off, my ambient temperature is 19 degrees Celsius when I took the measurements. So we are in a winter here in Australia, but if you're in a more warmer climate, I expect a lot of your these numbers could go up a little bit more. Now, starting off, I did take a measurement of the computer when it was on idle, and you're looking at 29 degrees Celsius, and the fan noise, you're looking at 31 decibels. So it's actually quite quiet there. I put the computer on 20% load. So this is what you'd be expecting for average use of office productivity work, web surfing, streaming videos. And when I took the measurement, you're looking at a maximum of 29 degrees Celsius. So it hasn't changed since idle. And the fan noise, you're looking at 33 decibels. So still very quiet there. And then I put the computer on 50% load and it measured at a maximum peak of 35 degrees Celsius. And for fan noise, you're looking at 35 decibels. So it's gone up a little bit, but not crazy a lot and I put the computer on 100% load, so at its maximum peak, and you're looking at 36 degrees Celsius, and the fan noise was 35 decibels. So that's actually very quiet, especially on 100% load there. And you really don't hear it fan run up at much at all. Now, I also took the measurement of the back cover, and you're looking at 41.7 degrees Celsius at its hottest part. So definitely don't put this on your lap when this is on 100% load there. So we're just testing out the thermal throttling on this computer here. I've had the computer running for over an hour now, and the CPU that I've got here is an i5 here, and its base clock is at 1.6 gigahertz. Now, like I said, it's running a bit over an hour, and it's now pretty much settled at 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. It doesn't actually have thermal throttling. It does have a little bit of turbo throttling, of course, but it's doing pretty good to actually hold that kind of high speed for what it is currently doing. I think it should be able to do even more if Lenovo actually allows the fan to spin up a lot higher to actually get it more cooler there. But it's looking actually pretty good there, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's test out the luminance or the brightness of the display. So I'm going to use my XYI1 display tool here to help me do the measurements. And the measurement that we need to take note of is this one here called current. It is measured in candela per square meter. Now one candela per square meter equals one nit of brightness that you might be more familiar with. So let's see what's the maximum brightness of this display here. I'll put it at its max 
and you're looking at 249 Kevin per square meter, so that's 249 bits of brightness, which is good. And I'm just going to quickly help out photographers and biographers. We're looking for 120, uh, which is the recommended what we're looking for to work on photos and videography. So looking at 110, so that's around about. I'm just going to zoom out just to help you guys out because we're going to fine tune this up at the moment. So at the moment, we're going to display settings here. And currently the value is at 80 there. So let's move it to 81. And look at 108. 82 is 115. And 84 is a bit too hot. 128. Let's move to 83. 83 is 122. We'll probably be better off with 100 uh, at value of 82 there is the best value there so because then we have 115 candle per square meter so that's 115 nits of brightness which is probably good for your brightness levels for when you work on photos. Testing out the color gamut coverage of the display we have results of 60.5% sRGB coverage and 42.4% Adobe RGB coverage. So the display has been color calibrated using the X-Rite i1 display tool that I have. So I'm going to show you what it looks like at a factory from Lenovo and then after the calibration using the calibration tool. So this is just high key and this is what it looks like out of factory and after calibration. You can see it's actually gone a little bit more magenta. That's all has cooled down a little bit as well too. So this is before calibration, after calibration. And we'll just try the different colors here. Now I've got mid-tones. So out of factory, after calibration. Definitely it's gone a little bit more cooler and it's got a little bit more magenta as well too. So this is low key before and after calibration. I'm going to do Scion before and after. And magenta before and after. I'll do yellow very quickly before and after and I'm just going to scroll all the way down to Pascal so this is what it looks like out of factory and after definitely and one more colored before out of factory and after calibration and I'm just going to do high key black and white. Now this is actually quite important. So before and after. And also mid-tones before and after. And I'll just do low key black and white as well before and after. So it's actually quite important if you're working with colors it's actually isn't quite important to actually get your own color calibration tool because what you see on your screen may not actually be seen the exact same on someone else's phone or display hence why it's always if you're working with colors it's always good to have your own color calibration tool now i will share the color profile created using my xray i want display in the link in the description below so you'll see that file down there so uh, but be wary that is using my ambient light but at least this gives you a good starting point but again if you do work with colors I do advise you to get your own color calibration tool they are a lifesaver there so I did perform the benchmarks for this computer here now this one here is configured with an i5 with 16 gigs of RAM and it's still using its integrated graphics so I'll put it up on the screen for you to see the scores so here is the pass mark Citibench R15 an R20, PC Mark, 3D Mark, and Spec View Pref. Overall, I find this computer is a 
pretty decent considering the price that you pay for and it's a 15 inch and it actually comes with a pen as well and it's also a tool one it's actually a very good price and especially I'm very surprised by its build construction considering this computer has been out for about seven months traveling around and it still as looks as if it's on new the day that I unboxed this computer here so I am pretty impressed by that now if you find this video informative enjoyed it give a like and if you haven't done already subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom screen I do try to upload a new video every week and just remember imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting i'll see you next video